All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the seventh session of Star Trek October, a Star Trek Adventures actual play. Now, we are set in the year 2414 aboard a specialized starbase in the Sabine Expanse. Well, usually we are. This time we're kind of on sort of the docked ship with the station. It'll make more sense when we get into play. But all you really need to know is that this game is in the same canon, quote unquote, as my Fenrir, Matahari, and Groundskeeper games. Though you don't need to have watched those to enjoy this one. Uh, but if you are interested in catching up, uh, go ahead and you can find the VODs on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions like iTunes and Spotify. And the reason I'm tripping over my words is because my players are literally blowing up Twitch with bits and everything else. Okay, focus. Uh, two announcements this week. Uh, first is I am putting out feelers for a potential Friday campaign of Star Trek Adventures. Um, it's going to be one of those slightly special games and that it's not going to be your standard Starfleet game. Um, it's going to be one of three things. Um, it's either going to be an all shapeshifters game, an all Romulan game, or a Temporal Accords one. And if you're interested in any of those three, just head over to my Twitter uh, to get the application link and uh, no experience required. So if you've ever wanted to play Star Trek or you just want to try something new, I definitely encourage you to apply. Uh, the second thing is that I am doing Extra Life. Uh, that's going to go till about November 7th. And uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing, there should be links below the stream. Uh, Watney, if you donated, it hasn't come through on my end yet. Just so you know. Okay. I'm only seeing 600 on my end, but the moment it comes through, you will, of course, get an on-stream thank you. Uh, let's see, anything else? Oh, uh, third thing is uh, we actually have a guest with us this week because this is the pseudo crossover with uh, the Groundskeepers game. So let's actually start with the regular crew, and then I will have the mysterious voice that's not on camera introduce themselves. So Dag, starting with you. Hey everybody, I'm Dag. I am Captain Kishwick, and we're going to have a good game today. I even put like weary makeup on to look like I was all beat up. Uh, yeah, and uh, hang out with me on Twitter at Trek Nexus. John, uh, John here. Uh, I play. Uh, who do I play? Uh, <laughs> I play uh, Terrell. I play Terrell, uh, who currently has a missing leg, um, and uh, I also play uh, Tabaris, who is the, uh, um, I'd say, uh, Bill of the Bill and Ted uh, group. Um, hey guys, I'm Aaron. I play Dr. Dottig, the Tellerite Chief Medical Officer, and the guy who jumped ahead of Matthew in the queue, mm -hmm. uh, very rudely. So I apologize, Matthew. Um, but I wanted to uh, do a little rebuttal here. John, I saved your leg, actually. So take that. You still have it. Well, at least you're good for something. <laughs> Uh, yes, on that note, hello everyone, I'm Matthew. I play um, Lieutenant Jana, a Cation Chief Engineer of both this ship and the station. And uh, I also play the Security Officer, uh, L Lieutenant Jenkins. And I am Watney. I play the Chief of Security of um, Deep Space October, Lieutenant Commander Stecko, the Empath. All right, and disembodied voice from nowhere, go ahead. Uh -oh. I'm Brian. I play uh, uh, Lieutenant Commander Jenner, Jemmer Talayup on the Matahari game, but more importantly for this game, I am guesting as Rez from the Groundskeepers game, uh, the Ted of our Bill and Ted crew. Excellent! Nice. <laughs> oh, and I do want to say, even if I'm not able to get to all of your uh, donations and bits uh, right away, uh, I do want to say thank you all for the support. It really does mean a whole lot to me. But uh, yeah, level, let's run the introductions. Level three complete. Hype We're train. on level four now. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah, let me let me run the intro so I can breathe for a moment. <laughs>
coming back. All right, and we're back. So something I like doing with all of my Star Trek games in particular is uh, having the players do an opening monologue. And Dag, I think you have that this week. I do. Congratulations, I'm not on mute. Nice. <laughs> We've made progress, everybody. <laughs> Captain's log, supplemental. What was supposed to be a routine second contact has turned into disaster. En route, USS Howe was intercepted by the leading edge of a rogue hypernova, which has left us adrift. We are improvising repairs with the tools we have, relying on our shuttles to communicate with each other and to transport personnel where they are badly needed. But that's not the worst of it. The home world has been devastated by the shockwave. Its atmosphere has been entirely stripped of ozone. My chief engineer tells me the natives who survive can only count on their mech suits to sustain them for less than a day. While my crew diligently works to restore systems and address our casualties, I have put my faith in two groundskeepers to provide assistance to them. Without regular communication, there is no way of knowing how well their efforts are proving. It has been discussed that the how be cannibalized into a kind of cargo vessel, combining materials from the ship with the shuttles to provide a type of carrier vessel to support what has become a massive rescue operation. It's at this time I'm reminded of Romulus, the failure of the Federation to support them in their greatest time of need. I won't make that mistake again. We're going to get this right. End log. All right. And uh, you have already two momentum, so you can actually just keep that. I won't reset it. <laughs> no, you can have one more. I'm not going to be that mean. You, you can have you can have three total. All right. So our first scene tonight is going to be as bit bombs continue to happen in chat. Thank you guys so much, Lily and Watney and Anonymous and a whole lot of list here. I'll try to catch up on those eventually. Yeah, Lily dropped five gift subs yeah thanks lily i really really appreciate it uh i'll try to interact with chat as the scene's going on but first scene is going to be in how's med bay uh where jana has come to really just get a feel for what's going on with his good buddy terrell so let's go ahead and take it from there so as i enter the sick bay would uh jaro still be on the sick bay bed has uh has Datek helped him to his feet, or what? Uh, he's he's laying on the bed. He's got his his hand his his forearm up over his head. He's like, oh. <laughs> Jonna will look at him for a minute, wince, and then he's going to race off to the uh, side where he's just noticed Doctor Datek. Uh, Doc, uh, how's he doing? Well, I've boosted the rate of osteogenesis to 65%, but that's about the best I can do. He won't lose the leg and the bone is mostly mended, but I would avoid um, stairs and ladders and dancing to Charleston. Charleston. Uh, well, I'm glad you clarified that because I was about to say that made about as much sense as, you know, I don't know rerouting a warp plasma manifold in order to achieve synchronization. I, whatever. So he, he, he can do his job. Well, I mean, I don't, I'm not a miracle worker. I don't know if he could ever do his job, but. Well, he, he's, he's a good pilot. You have to give him that. Except for the fact that he turned us into the wave and actually is the cause of everything that's happened to us. But, you know, right. that's. When he was under the effect of the anesthesia, he kept saying, hang 10. I don't know what he was talking about. Does that mean anything to you? It's this thing humans do. It involves water, so it's really rather disturbing to me. But I don't, it's probably not important at the moment. Regardless. You're... Are you asking me if I'm medically certifying him fit for duty? Has his intellectual capacity been affected in any way? Has the, are the drugs going to interfere with his ability to actually perform his duties? Like if he needs a, an extra leg or hand, I can help him with that. But well, is he of sound mind? As much as he ever was. Okay. Um, 
do you think you could send somebody down there to monitor them? I mean, there must be like some kind of neurocortical monitor or something like that that you could use, if not a person, just to make sure. Yeah, he's all right. I plan to go myself, and I'll use these things that are called eyes. Oh, over overhearing the conversation, uh, uh, Terrell kind of shouts out from the other room. How about a nurse? <laughs> If you want, doctor, I mean, I, I'd appreciate your presence. I mean, you're the most skilled medical practitioner we have. By far, yes. But uh, he's, he's my patient. And if I'm to understand correctly, if this is to work at all, we will need him. And I'll just have to make sure that he stays on his <laughs> on his feet. Well, shouldn't he be staying off his foot? I mean, it was a metaphor. Right. Okay. Good. Um, I guess you. I'm not. I'm giving you orders. I'm just saying maybe this is a good idea. If you want Aren't to, you like, because that's what it sounds like to me. I was going to make a suggestion. I mean, I, I know I'm Mr. Please, D double Mr. plus plus. Yes. But <laughs> thank no, you. no. 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 You have to get it right. It's C double minus D double plus. I choose to go D double plus. I mean, is there really a difference between C double minus and D double plus? Not, uh, not from where I'm standing. Hmm. I, I, I find I'm, I'm kind of being attacked in this conversation. So I'm just going to go over to my friend now. Is that okay? You're dismissed, Lieutenant. Thanks. That, that's very considerate of you, sir. <clears throat> And uh, Jana will actually go walk over to Terrell very tentatively. Uh, hey there, uh, buddy. H how you feeling? Well, on, on the plus side, uh, sounds like I'm going to be able to keep my leg. So that's good. Yeah, you know, maintaining possession of one's limbs tends to be a, a, a positive. It's a plus. Mm -hmm. And you're okay, right? The oh, yeah. happened down in engineering? Well, we had a few injuries, but uh, uh, Lieutenant Dorset was a, a really great help, and we held things together down there. Um, yeah. All right. Um, well, uh, so what's the plan? And he uh, scoots over, and he starts to uh, get to the point where he's uh, going to stand up. And Jana, seeing that, would immediately go over to his side and try to give him a hand up to his feet while holding some of his weight so that he can keep it off his injured leg. Oh, uh no need to fuss. Uh, yeah, that's that's not really for you. It's 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 really more for me. And he's actually going to embrace Jaro and hug him, it, also using his tail. So his tail sort of curls around Jaro's back. Uh, I'm really glad you're all right, man. I, I just I, I can't I can't tell you. I mean, we lost contact with the bridge, and I thought, uh, and you can see that he's sort of like squeezing uncomfortably tight now. Yeah, yeah. Um... Hey, you're you're much stronger than I remember. <laughs> it's the rock climbing. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Sorry about that. I, uh, he'll release Jero. Um, oh, it's good. Uh, you know, I was concerned as well when we lost communication. Uh, I was going to do the old trick, um, but I didn't even know how much the how much the ship would be moving. Uh, I was going to do the old trick that we talked about, where you where I tilt the ship to one side for a little bit and then back to the other side to communicate to each other. You know, you could have just modified a, a tachyon pulse generator using a, a, a tricorder. That yeah, totally would have been yeah, easier. But, you know, it's ah, never mind. So, are we going? Uh, so, where are we going? Uh, well, uh, we're going down to the shuttle bay. The captain you know, needs a vessel. Yeah. Turn, turning into the wave to ride it should have worked. Just saying. I, I really think that it probably would have been better to remodulate the shields on a coaxial phase pulse in order to actually align them with the wave front, but, um, yeah, but it's not as sexy. You know, losing a leg is probably the least sexy thing I can imagine, so it's it's still here. Yeah, but it's all horribly he, mangled. It, it's, it's, not, it's not that bad, is it? He's looking down at his leg. <laughs> Well, you know, all you humans are like hairless 
apes. So I don't know. The lack of fur automatically deserves that. I'm not the one to ask about aesthetics. Uh -huh, I guess. Uh -huh. Well, all right. Well, let's get out of here before the doctor wants to come. Oh, no, he's coming. He's, 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 uh, doctor. I'm going. Yes. Also, thank you for uh, making the comment about, you know, losing a leg and having that be unsexy. Um, as a uh, recipient of a prosthetic leg, that really makes me feel great about the sacrifices that I've made in the line of duty. See, I, I, I couldn't even tell that you had lost a leg, Doc. No, it's, it's. I mean, the, you're just you're just drop dead, sexy man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the the prosthetic. Did you do it yourself? I mean, it's it's just remarkable work. And we don't take if you want a phase of them. I'm totally okay with this. Yeah, I mean, that's solid C plus plus work. D double D D D double plus. I think not not C plus plus. Oh, or C minus minus. Yeah, yeah. What's what <laughs> as as, as uh, Terrell's like trying to walk Jana out of the sick bay. All right, let's just let's just go. Oh, I love it. All right, so our next scene is going to be in the shuttle bay, where pretty much everyone has assembled, or at least uh, had a proxy there for them. Uh, so we have four C Stetka, we see Terrell, we see Jana, we see Dottig. Uh, my main question is whether or not the captain would have come in or if he would have remained out on his shuttle. Because where we last left off, uh, the captain was out sort of coordinating things on a shuttle just off of the hull of the house. So what's the play here, Dag? Captain's in the shuttle bay. Captain's in the shuttle bay. All right. <clears throat> so Kijwick is here. All right. And uh, if you guys want a supporting character here, I can play them in the background. But otherwise, this is your chance to figure out where to go from here. All right, people, we've got two options on the table. Are we going to fix the how, or are we going to go with the carrier shuttle option that I'm not entirely clear on, but sounds less power intensive? Well, uh, Captain, if I may, uh, just for a moment, um, I've reviewed the status of the ship, and to be frank, well, we may be able to salvage a sufficient amount of dilithium from the shuttles in order to reinitiate the warp core, the damage to the actual computer cores of the ship would make any attempt at rescuing the planet or at its population, uh, well, functionally impossible. The that how makes is, the decision a lot easier. It's mostly a lost cause. It's okay. She served her time. What are your what are your specs for this? What do you want to call this amalgamation that you suggested earlier? Oh, that's uh, that's above my pay grade, sir. Um, I mean, Jero has some ideas about the engine design, I would presume, given that he's going oh, yeah. to be the one who'll be piloting it. But uh, maybe you'd want to ask him about naming it that that's not really my department i think we're going with the aardvark sir i am unfamiliar with that designation but whatever suits the need in the immediate time <laughs> that just looks why the aardvark just, uh, you know just it's what came to mind and also now that we've designed it naming it the aardvark if anybody ends up looking in any sort of schematics or, or plans, we'll be listed first. Well, that Hopefully. is most important. All right. What are the what are the plans for the Aardvark? How are we going to put this together? Well, um, and uh, Jaro has pulled out some uh, uh, Things that he uh, uh, commandeered from sick bay that he's drawn on, and uh, he's like showing, like it's like the back of his charts and stuff like that. Is that my? Tell me you didn't erase that pad. No, 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 no. Okay. So anyway, uh, this is what I was looking at. And Kishwick will look it over. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jana, you want to weigh in on the engineering needs here? 
Uh, well, Captain, the uh, the warp core of this vessel that is being proposed would have to be substantially more compact than, well, those of most vessels of this size in order to account for the uh, the greater power draw but and expanded cargo bays. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's feasible using the materials we have on hand. It's going to take pretty much every engineering officer that we have, but we can get it done. Any danger to maintaining the how while you get it done with all hands working on it? There's danger in everything, sir. Uh, but the magnetic containment field does seem to be stable and most of the hull breaches have been sealed. Um, I, I don't think that there's an exorbitant amount of danger in diverting staff. What about the uh, phaser arrays from the how? Do you think we can retrofit them onto this vessel for added security? It's possible. I mean, the independent power supplies weren't affected by the general cascading overload of the, well, warp plasma manifolds on board the ship, given that they are, again, independent, which was the whole reason we couldn't drop power from them in the first place. The, the plan is to... Survived. That's a good idea, Stedco. If the plan is to make this our, what is the term, our male Harry play, uh, we will need to make sure that the security is primo to make sure that no one can attack this vessel en route to its destination. Phasers can also be used as cutting tools. I might also say that when we abandon the how we leave a cry ba baby of sorts to mm -hmm. ensure anyone in the area who might have malintent be drawn to this vessel and not ours. I think Jana and you can figure out the details on any crybaby plan. Yes, sir. Is, uh, I mean, I'm only the doctor, but is the protocol not to scuttle the ship if we were to abandon it? Well, we can we're scuttle gonna have... the ship, but leave in the debris field. We're going to okay. scuttle the ship when we can evacuate everybody from it. I don't plan on everybody going with you on this mission. It would also be impossible to fit the entire crew on any kind of craft that we're designing. It simply wouldn't have the life support capabilities to maintain the entire remainder of the crew. And if there are wounded when you get to your destination, Dr. Dodig is going to be needed and plenty of space available. So I will stay back with the how and make sure that she scuttled when Starfleet sends an evac ship. So our How mission is... Oh, sorry. How long do you think that'll take for them to show up? I suspect it will be after you leave. With communications being down and this being beyond the frontier, Starfleet didn't have a regular patrol in this area. Uh... Captain, are you suggesting you're going to stay here while we leave? That's the current plan. I trust everybody in your hands, Stedco. Well, my job is to make sure that you're safe as well. So I'll need assurance from you <laughs> that that's the case. <laughs> well, I can give you two assurances. One, I'm literally not going anywhere. And two, you'll know exactly where I am. Well, then the crybaby plan is out the window because I'm not going <laughs> to leave a big fat sensor log, sensor reading here for to draw people to you. But so in regards to like, you know, how seaworthy this ship is going to be, what is what like, is it going to help us with the mission that we have, which is to help the all the people on the planet? Their ozone is completely gone. Correct. So we need to somehow replenish that or evacuate them. Yep. And the details on how to restore the ozone to Vedas Prime. Uh, Mr. Jana, would you like to brief us on that process? Uh, well, if you're uh, lost, there's a handout. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Dottig is also an expert in uh, you know, the, the more scientific aspects of this plan. I'm, I'm certain that he could do just as well of a job as I could. And he's also a great deal more confident than I am. So he, he probably, and he's been a teacher. So they're great at public speaking. 
Mr. Dodding. Uh, doctor, please, Captain. I didn't spend six years at Starfleet Academy to be called Mr. Dotic. Uh, doctor. But, but in terms of uh, the damage to Vedas Prime is, well, as Commander Stetko stated, nearly all of the ozone has been stripped away, and we will have... Total biome collapse and uh, planet being reduced in status to a class D rock, not capable of supporting anything but single-celled organisms. Currently, there are 2 billion people on Vadas Prime that need our help. In terms of the scientific implications of restoring the ozone to an entire planet... I mean, Starfleet terraforming crews have done more with less equipment than we have. However, their equipment was in working order. This uh, undertaking will be monumental, but I believe that Lieutenant Jana has a solid plan for the shuttle modifications and the eventual restoration of the ozone. My concern is a medical one. And that is, if we cannot restore the ozone, uh, we'll have... be time to mourn later. Let's focus on the job at hand. Very so good. We're going to have to. Uh, uh, John and I are going to be putting some large uh, canisters on here to uh, try to hold up as much water as we possibly can. So. Would it be possible to make use of the transporter buffer and some kind of compression initiative to get the water in a much more space compact manner and then electrolyze it <coughs> during the delivery? It's... Well, I was I was also thinking that we could potentially have uh, external external canisters, um, and then we could charge the external canisters as we are flying back towards the planet. Uh, completing the electrolysis in the water. It's theoretically possible to modify the Bussard collectors of a shuttle to separate um, the ozone from simple H2O. That way we relieve a lot of the mass restriction. And of course, as you know, individual particles, that's what our transporter buffers are designed to hold. If we separate the water and take only the ozone, um, we will be able to store enough in several runs, I would suspect, to potentially either stave off this disaster or revert it entirely, although the engineering implications of this are beyond me. Well, uh, on that note, it may be possible to actually repurpose those uh, independent phaser power supplies on board the Howe in order to create a kind of backup power system for the Heisenberg compensators in the transporter. Based on our knowledge of the uh, cryoneural gel packs that are on board the station, we could create a, a new kind of um, isolinear computer core that will allow us to store a greater amount of data on board the shuttles. Well, basically keeping a, a large amount of O3 in suspension in the transporters is possible. These are good suggestions. When do you think you'll be able to launch? I'm going to actually turn that over to you, GM. How long do you think that this uh, process is going to take? I was waiting for a good opportunity to jump in there. So it depends on how fast you want to get it done is what I would start with. Because my only metric here is really that one episode of Voyager where they built the Delta Flyer in what? A few days? A week? Two weeks maybe? Um, so it's one of those things where you can certainly try to have it done in like half a week or a week. But it's going to be at a higher difficulty overall if you were to, say, go for a two or a three or a four week thing. But by four weeks, you probably have already missed the ball kind of a thing. So no matter what you do, it's going to be difficult. But it's just a matter of are you willing to cut corners? 
Are you willing to compromise safety for function? You know, things things to consider. So, Captain, uh, John and I were thinking probably two weeks. Do what you can in 10 days. I can't let any of those people suffer more than possible. And if it takes Starfleet more than 10 days to get out here, we're all dead anyway. We'll do our best. Understood, sir. Sadko, if you can stay behind for a second. Sure. Everybody else, got to work. All right. And of course, as uh, Jana, Dottig, and Terrell, I assume, leave, mm -hmm. that uh, does give uh, Kijwick and Stetko a moment alone. You wanted to see me, sir? Yeah. I think your plan with the crybaby has merit. Is there any way, do you think, that we can set up a relay system using probes and transporter enhancers so that the shuttle doesn't have to make multiple trips to a water heavy world but if there's one in the system you can set up a transporter network where you can initiate a beam in in orbit and just transport the water directly through the relay from the other planet kind of like a repeating or recursive transporter signal you get the idea. Well, that's really more of a Jana question, but um, I, it, it might be possible, sir. Um, we'll have to see what gear we have aboard the How. I, this was a relatively light, lightly stocked mission. So um, let me see what I can find and put together. Sounds good. And you've got this. Thank you, sir. All right. I'm going to head back to the shuttle and see if I can keep getting in touch with Starfleet. Dismissed. All right. So uh, right before we uh, transition to the first bit of our crossover, to answer your question, Rez, we're going to handle that in character. So we actually transition away from the normal Starfleet designs and the Starfleet interiors to an entirely alien one. Uh, a place of uh, curves and bio f uh, bio flesh and really just a alien interior. Uh, lots of greens, lots of uh, haze in the air. And as the camera sort of comes into what would be a bridge of some sort, uh, we see two individuals. Uh, we see one individual on the left side of the bridge. Uh, they're wearing Operations Gold. And I'm going to let them describe themselves uh, them in a little bit. And then to the right, uh, we see someone in command red. And then in the middle of the bridge, there is a hologram. And all three of you are looking at a um, rather worn down planet. But for the people at home who may have not watched Groundskeepers, uh, Rez, let's start with you. Then we'll do Tavris. Tell us a little bit about Rez. So Rez is a sort of prissy looking, slim, <clears throat> tall uh human uh palish skin dark hair uh, a very well trimmed beard uh and he he's wearing a um sort of a an old school take on a star trek on a starfleet uniform so it's got tails it's got elbow patches and there's like a little uh, tabard on his one shoulder so that he can display his groundskeeper um uh, iconography All right, and Tavris, you're up next. So Tavris um, is a student of uh, human history and as such has adopted the visage of uh, a, a favorite from the original series. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, he's got on his gold uniform. Um, he's got uh, some close crop, crop brown, uh, blonde hair. And uh, he is the doctor and security officer for... Uh, the Troust. And uh, he looks, he always looks really excited about everything that's going on. And uh, he is uh, carrying around a small metal um, Knight Rider lunchbox. <laughs> All right. So uh, as you're looking at the uh, planet of Vadis Prime out of the view screen, uh, Troust, quote unquote, the uh, not artificial, but actual like living intelligence of the ship just sort of sighs and says, well, they really weren't kidding, were they? Uh, that ozone layer is completely gone. Hell, it's, it's a miracle that that atmosphere survived at all. Wow. Uh, 
you have your work cut out for you. I mean, it seems like a simple engineering question, right? We just need to generate a large enough electrical field that the the O2 in the atmosphere will separate into single oxygen molecules and then uh, recombine into ozone, drift up into the upper layers of the atmosphere, and some of it will decompose back into regular O2, right, Tabris? Yeah, you know, uh, the the um, you know, the the science is pretty sound with your idea, uh, I think. Why don't uh, Tabris, and you should have actual Tabris's sheet here. Uh -huh. uh, go ahead and have Tabris roll me a insight and a science, please. Difficulty of three. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> well, not with that attitude. You gotta believe, man. You gotta believe. Oh, I believe it's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oof, wow. So uh, I'm gonna let this succeed at cost, and uh, because I need some more threat, because I didn't end with much, so I need some threat. So Tabris. The idea is sound on paper. The problem is, in order to generate that much ozone, you would more or less completely destroy the ecosystem that survived on O2, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, one thing I would suggest doing is, um, well, uh, Troust, is there any way that you can run some long-range uh, long scans for any, uh, you know, uh, comets or anything like that that, uh, you know, I, you know, free floating ice, uh, any, you know, any planetoids out here that have a lot of ice and then, then possibly we could, uh, blast huge hunks of ice and just, uh, you know, tractor it or extend our shields around it and come back. And, uh, Trous does a sort of cock of the head to the side as the scan runs and says, yes, there actually is a planet in system, uh, Vatus 8. Uh, unfortunately, it appears that it has life on it. Uh, what, what, what kind of life? Uh, not really able to tell for sure, but some form of octopi, squid. Huh. Um. A hey. Any other? Any other sources? And there's a slight pause as you know the data comes in. Closest thing is a comet about two light years distant. Uh, shouldn't be a problem to get it, but I'm not confident that we could tractor it all the way back here in time. Out of out of character, what's the fluid in fluidic space made of? We never know. <laughs> I, I don't think Star Trek, not even Star Trek Online, ever tells us what the fluid is made out of. But I like what you're thinking, so continue that line of thought. So what if... Tabris, hear me out. This is a kind of a wild idea, but what if we opened uh, quantum singularity to the to fluidic space above the planet and then siphoned some of the fluid out and subjected it to a chemical reaction that would generate ozone? That way there's no waiting for us to get to the planet, load it up with water, get it all the way back here. I, I'm the, not patient like that. Well, well, then, then maybe we should first run a test. Um, let's go away from the planet a little bit, pull a little bit of the fluidic space out, and, and, and see what we can do with the test. I mean, wait a minute. We don't need to. I'm sure we don't need any. Trust, you have some fluid still stored on board, right? It is part of my standard life support operations, yes. Would it be possible to to run a, a test to see if we can generate ozone from that fluid? This is crazy as hell, but I knew what I was signing up for when I let you pilot me. Yeah, we we could certainly try it. Alrighty, let's do it. Let's see if we can get some ozone out of our own home. Yeah, are you, and you know, technically, I'm the pilot. <laughs> Trust doesn't comment on that, but we're going to transition away uh, actually back to the how. And uh, I actually don't have a good really screen for this, so we're just going to go to the theater of the mind. So in the grand scheme of things, uh, there's two ways we can do this. Now, normally when I say that, that means I'm going to give you either a high difficulty one shot or a very long extended task at a lower difficulty. When I say that the former is going to be nearly impossible, I mean it. So you still could go for it. That is possible. It's possible. It's just improbable. In fact, I'll just tell you straight up. It's a difficulty seven if you take the one shot. The one task, it's difficulty of seven. If you do it as an extended task, it's only a difficulty of five to start.
only. Oh, you're, you're so generous. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. L uh, I would argue for the extended task. Yeah, I'd agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me type it out then, because this is indeed still going to be rather difficult in terms of extended tasks. So your work mm -hmm. track is going to be out of 16. Your magnitude is you need four breakthroughs. Uh, your starting difficulty, of of course, is going to be a five. And due to the damaged nature of the how that you're pulling parts from along with the shuttle, I'm going to say there's two resistance on all of this to start. So uh, in terms of actual tasking, uh, I would say that there is argument for both control and daring, uh, but definitely an engineering uh, department here, I think. Um you can argue for another department if you wanted, but I think engineering is really going to be the bread and butter here. Do you want to take the lead and I'll assist? Yeah, I think that would probably or, be the best. Or actually, let, let's just meta it a little bit. Uh, <laughs> control? What's your control? Uh, my control is 10. And uh, daring? I believe that's also 10. Oh. And your uh, but, engineering uh, is four, right? Yes, and I will also say that I could try to argue for my, um, what is it, the right tool with the right job. If I paid mm -hmm. a momentum, I could get a sonic driver, which might be able to facilitate the construction of this starship more quickly. It okay. would give you an advantage, yeah. Yeah, that that makes the difference right there because my, uh, my daring and control are 11 with the engineering four, so... Okay, so could I pay but one I, momentum to uh, to get a sonic driver? I'd allow it. Okay. And I'm going to tap my determination. Um, this time everybody lives because I want to complete this task as quickly as possible and uh, save everyone on this planet before the radiation actually kills them. Okay. And I will spend... It would be two momentum for the next eye and then yeah. three threat for the next one. Unload. Yeah, I'll spend both momentum to roll three dice. Alrighty. So control engineering. Mm-hmm. Three dice. Starship construction as a focus. Yep. Okay, so that's uh, four successes to start with. Can Terrell oh. get you? Nope. Okay. But so, I do have the, the Sonic Driver, which uh, with Which my does talent. lower it to a four. And then so a you three do pass. if it does uh, apply a bonus because of my talent. Ah, then yes. Uh, you actually get a momentum from that then. Uh, so now comes the uh, real sort of important thing. Do you have Miracle Worker as a talent? I do not, but I do have... And, and roll for your untapped potential. True. Yeah, you know, say so let's do the untapped potential first, see if that gets you anything. Does not get you anything, unfortunately. All right, so you're going to be rolling six challenge die here, and whatever you roll, we're taking two off the top because there is two resistance. Nice. All right, well, uh, do you want to spend any momentum to get uh, piercing on that? Or uh, you don't need to re-roll, but I guess you could if you wanted to. Uh, I think I will spend one for two piercing. Okay. So uh, we're going to handle this in a sort of a montage fashion as the first, let's see, Kijwik, you gave them 10 days. We'll say each attempt at this is two days. So by the end of the second day, um, you know, maybe Stetco, you're walking by the shuttle bay just to check in and they already have the Duranium frame up. They're already welding in place. Uh, the superstructure and moving on into sort of the internals of the ship. So they're they're making quite a large amount of progress here, uh, but it is still going to take some time. So you are uh, you are at eight s sixteen on the work track. You have a magnitude of three remaining. The difficulty has become a four, and we're going to do one more attempt at this, and then we're going to go back to the groundskeepers. Um, how about I take the lead on the second one? That way I have determination to spend. 
Can you do that? Are you yeah. good with that? Oh yeah. I'd allow it. Okay. Great. So control engineering. Uh, I'm going to give you what is it? Two threat. Okay. For an extra die, and I'm using determination with uh, something to prove. I uh, yeah. And starship con uh, starship uh, starship construction. And let's see how this goes. That is uh, five successes already, and I think you have bold engineering. Do you not? Uh, no, I have bold con. Ah. All right. Well, that is uh, five successes, seven successes. Very nice. So that is a grand total of three momentum by my count. Oh, and, and two extra momentum. So that's five momentum total. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's going to be another six challenge die here. Um, I'm going to spend two momentum for four piercing. Okay. Or two well, you only need well, to get rid of two. One, one for two piercing. Yep. And then let's do six challenge dice. Mm-hmm. And we'll re-roll the two zeros. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you an option here. You have completed the work track. And this is one of those things where if you had Miracle Worker, you would have gotten this done completely within four days. But neither of you has Miracle Worker. So I'm going to offer you a devil's deal. If one of you takes one of your talents away right now, and takes Miracle Worker, you will complete the shuttle design in four days, but you must replace the talent at this moment. Done. I'll replace untapped potential with that, if that's okay. That is perfectly okay. All right. All right. That's so a, That's a cool one to swap for, though. Yeah, it is, because I, I, I think that's actually a really good one, too, because it offers a lot of role-playing sort of mm -hmm. things, where maybe this, you know, Jana, if you don't mind me flavoring, maybe it's one of the things that on the fourth day, you kind of step back and you you sort of wipe your brow and you, you sort of look at what you've made and you think, well, what's left? And you've done everything already. There's, there's not, you've finished a type 20 or an aardvark shuttle as a, I guess we're calling it now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was pretty much exactly what I was thinking. Uh, this is sort of like a, a baptism of fire for him in the construction of the ship. Yeah. Yep. So now my question is, um, who are you telling and so uh, Terrell just looks at Jana when uh, when they both step back, and he goes, "I, I think we're done." How is that possible? Because we're awesome, and he goes to give him a high five, and he reciprocates with a fist bump as well. I, I guess we really are. I mean, that's. Uh, do you want to tell the captain, or should I? I mean, that, yeah. Actually, oh, hold on. Uh, Ter Terrell to uh, Captain. Here's my care. Go ahead. We have we have a problem. Can you can you come down here immediately? Just a minute. Where are so you? We're 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 in we're in the construction bay. Um, you you just have to see it to believe it. I know we're only four days in, but I don't think we're going to make, I, I don't think we're going to meet your, uh, I, I don't think we're going to hit the 10 day, uh, 10 day marker. There's a lot of lives riding on this. Terrible. I know. Uh, may, maybe some of your guidance will help, sir. I'll be right there. Oh, I know. And I, I imagine I it's literally doing. one of those things because Kijwick is still chilling out on that shuttle, coordinating everything. So it's one of the things where the uh, external doors of the construction bay open up and Kijwick doesn't like careen in, but he comes in rather quickly and just sort of settles down onto the deck. The back hatch of the shuttle pops open and Kijwick, you walk out probably expecting to see something bad and there's a full shuttle already made for you. Uh, Terrell has set up a ribbon for uh, for the captain to cut. And, and he's also muted. got a. Yeah, he's he's also got. He's also got like a, a bottle of uh, Romulan ale for him to smash. Wow! Uh, oh, that's uh, on the ship. And Kiswick is like totally like hasn't slept in two days. Uh, I see you've got the exo armor done. Is there something wrong with the interior? 
what are you what well what is we, this we just need you to uh to smack it with this to get it complete sir kishwick will take the bottle we only you son of a bitch you did it you didn't you an entire well, bottle we did it we did it <sighs> hey it was mostly jana sir uh, no, no, it's, it was really a, a team effort. Uh, he's he's downplaying his performance, which is very bizarre for him. I think he should go to sickbay in the very near future. Either way, you gave me an estimate of 14 days. I told you 10, and you did it in less than half. I Every don't know time. where your I don't know where your buffer <laughs> time went, but uh, you can safely say you've earned your reputations as miracle workers. And I think. I think we need more than just the two of you here to see this. Kiswick to all hands. If you can safely do so, please drop what you are doing and convene in the construction bay immediately. I'd say, you know, it maybe takes about 10, 20 minutes for everybody who's going to show shows. Uh, I imagine Stetko and Dottig would be there because, you know, mm -hmm. it seems about right. Uh, Dorset would be there as well. Um, trying to think if there's any of those. Oh, uh, your favorite uh, Russian pal is there as well. Jenkins. You know, got you got to have Jenkins on everything. But yeah, uh, I would say, Kijwik, looking around, you have probably about half the crew just sort of lining the walls of the bay. Uh, all of them sort of applauding and you know, waiting for you to give a speech of some sort. And uh, Terrell has his arm around uh, John and he's like poking him and he like, see all that? That's that's for us, man. So oh, I personally, Dag, is assuming that more than just the two of you were here, like the people who were gathered, mm -hmm. all the engineers had a hand in this. So this is, oh, yeah. this is mm -hmm. their achievement as well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This represents one of the most crucial foundations of the Federation and Starfleet. With your hands, your ingenuity, your training, and your ability to rely on and learn from each other, you have put together in four days what may very well be the saving grace of billions. I want you all to look around at each other and I want you to see that this crew here with their hands and their minds and their hearts, what you can do and how well you can rely on each other, especially when the chips are down. You all owe yourselves an amazing congratulations. And just with this one bottle, it seems too little. I intend to confer my highest recommendations for all of you for getting this job done. No matter the outcome of this mission, I want you all to know this is your time. You have all done such an amazing job here. And with that done, Kizrik will smash the bottle over uh, the, the prow of the shuttle. And of course, green liquid goes spraying across the uh, cockpit window. And I'm going to uh, spend just one point of threat here because as you do that, Kizrik, it doesn't crack or anything. But as you smack the bottle, something in the cockpit kind of hangs down like it jostles then hangs down. And you see that someone has put fuzzy dice on the rear view mirror, quote unquote. I approve. <laughs> I recognize that as an ancient earth good luck charm for when the wind is needed at your back. And yeah, I tell you what, I think we're going to go to break on that because that was a really good speech. I think that's uh, mm -hmm. that's going to be our break. So yeah, uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around.
All right, welcome back, everyone, to the second part of Session 7 of uh, Star Trek October. Uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, the crew of DSO has more or less performed a miracle. They have made a Yo, shuttle. Motivator. Yep, We have uh, made a shuttle that is uh, potentially going to save billions of lives. Um, but on uh, sort of the grand scheme of things, we are going to transition back to the groundskeepers. Uh, that are present, and they are currently experimenting on the, shall we say, uh, possibility of converting fluidic space into ozone. So at this point, Taverson Res, um, you have up one of your many little spaces on the uh, on the trial setup to sort of perform this experiment in. And my main question is, how hard do you want to go? Hard. Yeah, I mean. You know, There's some people down there that might die. Yeah, and we were sent here to, you know, make it so that people really would respect and admire the groundskeepers. So, you know, this is this is important. Okay, so I'm going to offer you the same sort of choice: high difficulty one shot or extended task. Oh, Ooh. high difficulty one shot for sure. Oh yeah, for high sure. difficulty one shot. Okay, <laughs> that's how the so, groundskeepers roll. <laughs> so here's how it's going to boil down. It's going to be a difficulty of six. It's going to be a control and a science. And I'm also going to spend a little bit of threat to make the complication range in 18 to 20. And that means you have to take the lead on the roll. That's not good. It does. That is what it means. <laughs> All right. Sorry, what's the difficulty? The difficulty is six. You may six. wish to spend determination. Oh, for sure. I'm for sure spending. Oh, do you want to? Do you want to switch it to a? Uh, you know, never mind. It's fine. Well, what was your idea? I'm curious now. Now, if we wanted to switch it to a track, but ah, I, no. I'm fine with I'm fine with the single action. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I will spend my determination using the value. Uh, what I don't know, I can always learn. Mm hmm. Um. And then I need five momentum to get the other two dice. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, you have three momentum, so you would have to give me three momentum, two threat. Oh, right. Yeah. I'm just gonna spend everyone's momentum. I hope everyone's uh -huh. okay with that. Uh, and, and can give I make threat. And can I make an argument for um? using medical knowledge on the conversion of bio uh, biomechanical matter into uh, just its base components. Sure, Tabris, you can assist with a uh, reason medicine. Okay. And can I use transporters and replicators? As a focus? As yeah. a focus. Excellent. All right. Well, and with that, there's not a lot else to... Uh... I don't Not think a whole lot my, else to do. I don't think either of my talents will help me here. Um, I'm just going to check what... I'm pretty sure that's the wrong... No, that's involving the programming study of a computer system. Never mind. All right. Cool. Here we go. Okay. So I, mean, I, I got see six successes. Six successes. <laughs> but there is a complication. Of course there is. Cause, it cause wouldn't be a res be. roll. All right, uh, let me check Tabris because that that could also be a complication. Uh, it's a thirteen. You're good. Yep. So, do you want the good news or the bad news first? I would love the bad news first. Mm -hmm. Bad news: when you open the quantum singularity to get fresh organic matter, something comes with it. All right, that's fine. Yeah, that seems <laughs> but fair. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. The good news, though, is that once you acquire a fresh sample of organic matter is actually rather easy to convert the organic matter of fluidic space to ozone and a bunch of other sort of carbohydrates and other organic material. However, and we might be going to this map a little bit early, so just ignore the shuttle that's in the foreground. Uh, Troust, as you're sort of floating off a ways from the planet, you know, you're, you're doing what you do. Uh, something happens with the quantum singularity that you've opened up. And by that, I mean, you go to close it and Troust reports 
Well, shit. I was afraid of that. Uh, details, trust. Of. Uh, well, I hope you feel like shooting people, because uh, we've got two very angry Undine ships headed this way. Oh, Tabris always feels like shooting people, don't you, Tabris? Oh, you bet! <laughs> and sure enough, coming out of the Quantum <clears throat> Singularity are two Undine bioships loaded for bear. And uh, we're actually going to do one round of combat, then we're going to bounce back to the Howl group. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let me get you guys in the turn order here. Add turn, and Troust, uh, you guys do get the first move. All right. Um, we're going to... Um, I get, we're just going to... Hold on. I'm, it's been a while since we played the uh, uh, this particular game. Um, Take your time. What is our weapons again? Now your weapons is actually pretty high because you're based on the uh, Undine ship that's in the Delta book. So you have a security of three. And you have both cannons and an array. So if you wanted to get closer and tear them up. Yeah, let's uh, let's get closer and tear them up. Okay. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we'll say that that's your one action to move forward, and then uh, you want to just open up with cannons? Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, whoever one of you is firing the, the cannons, it's going to be a control security. The trust will assist you with a weapon security. Difficulty of two. All right, and um, well, we don't have any momentum or anything, so that's that makes that easy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so control security, you said? You got it. Control security. I guess I should also go to red alert because I have that option. You know, and I'm going to have to give you one threat uh, just because, you know, that's the way things go. Mm -hmm. And did you roll for the ship yet? No. I did not. I should have. Sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Complication. I like it. I like it. All right, uh, Brian, can you get another success? Very crucial. Is a weapon security, yeah? Yep. Always has a... No. Oh, God! <laughs> How? Why is this a thing? Why is it every time right. we do this with the groundskeepers? What every is... fucking time. <laughs> I'm just lucky, is what I'm saying. Every fucking time you do this. Like, mm -hmm. I... I can't even be mad anymore. I have to be mildly impressed with how you keep doing this. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, I think what happens is, uh, Tabris, you go to hit the fire button, and there's sort of a <laughs> sound. <laughs> and moments later, you realize that, um, you have just ejected the entire left side of the ship, which was Rez's half. <laughs> oh, God. What? All right. Uh, we need to... Uh, ah! <laughs> what, what, he, did, what did you do? Nothing. What have you done, Tabris? <laughs> it was it was Troust. <laughs> no, don't put this one on me. This one's all you. I, I think it's equal parts. Oh, Lord. And as you're floundering in space, the other Undine are going to get a shot here. So let's see. I'm going to give them uh, it's three dice because they have their ship assisting. Let's see what the first one rolls. Uh, good news is the first one just sort of fires at you, misses completely. The second one actually does manage to hit you. So I actually have to roll some damage here. Let's see. So you guys have, because you have the same scale ship as them, uh, they have Piercing 5 on theirs, which is the big one. They have Vicious 2 and Piercing 5. Like a so, through the bonus to our shields, so. This is true. Uh, let's see. So they have a total of, it looks like, 7 challenge dice on this one. Okay. So, Troust, you are taking 9 damage before resistance. Um, I believe your resistance is, what, a grand total of six, I think is what we said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's three damage, but uh, there is piercing five on that. So I think you still end up taking the full nine. 
So, uh, what's happening is the bioship you tried to shoot at initially lances out with its fluidic array and lances through the right side of the ship and, well, kind of lost uh, the right side of the ship now. <laughs> God. Yeah, this is this is going fine. Every, everything's on fire. Everything Everything's fine. But yeah, uh, that is where we're going to switch back to the HAL crew because they have no idea any of this is going on. So, uh, Watney, uh, mm-hmm. I have a question for you before I switch scenes. Sure. Uh, would you be doing your thing in the Aardvark shuttle or would you be doing it, say, like on the bridge or in a shuttle bay in engineering? Like, where would you be doing your thing? Uh, the shuttle. The new shuttle. Okay. So then we'll the cut Aardvark. to this. In- yes, the Aardvark. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll cut to the interior of the shuttle mm-hmm. where uh, the away team has assembled. Oops. And uh, Kijwick. I screwed the overlay. You guys, you guys know how to fix it as I get everybody on screen. So, uh, Kijwick, who's going on the away mission? Is Terrell going? I guess is the major question, because he is still, quote-unquote, injured. Yep. Okay. So, Jana, Terrell's going to go there. Jana, I know you're coming. Uh, Stetko, you're, of course, here. And Dottig is there. Uh, Kijuk, do you want to run uh, Jenkins while uh, all this is going on? He wants me to be Jenkins. Uh, yes, we have to be Jenkins now. All right. So Jenkins is in the back. All right. So the uh, the interior of the Aardvark type shuttle is, well, to not mince words, it's rather spacious. Um, it's one of those things where not only was this designed for, um, you know, obviously carrying large loads like a bunch of water, things like that. Um, it's also meant to um, more or less. Um, you could throw a good party on this one. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see. Stecco, in order to do your thing, tell me a little bit about what you want to do specifically and I'll tailor appropriately. Well, I was going to go for the whole 22nd century probes if there was any on board mm-hmm. the how there that were cannibalized for the shuttle I'd, I'd say with that an amount of successes you guys had there, there'd be about five there's five okay so she is attempting to um, take whatever programming they have wipe mm-hmm. that and then install logic onto whatever system is like left over to recursively transport the buffer of the atmosphere needed. Okay. Uh, I would say, what is your, tell me, what is your engineering and what is your security? Mm, okay. Because I think you have an engineering of what, two? <laughs> yes, yeah, one. One, okay. And my uh, security is five. <laughs> your security is a five. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Let's say that this, I'll let it be a daring security, but the caveat will be the complication range is a 17 to 20 for free. Okay. But uh, difficulty of two, though, to get this done. Is there any way to assist her? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Stetko, would uh, Jenkins be able to assist you? Jenkins? Yes, because he is your security hand, so. <laughs> um... I, I, yeah, I could order him to help me. I mostly just want to give Dag a moment to play Jenkins. So she also has starship weapon systems, which I don't know if that, or she has star, sorry, starship security systems, Mm -hmm. which would, would probes. If it was a photon torpedo, I'd give it to you, but probes are technically different. Like they fall under the science category more often than not. What about forensic science? (laughs) No, Maddox, you may not have power systems. Okay, that's fine. What am I rolling? Uh, you're rolling a daring and a security, difficulty of two. Uh, you have no momentum. You could give me threat for more dice. I'll give you... How much threat do I need to give you for one extra? Just one. Just one threat, then. I'm rolling three. But no... No focus. I mean, I believe. And Jane, what, what are you doing? What, the, what am I rolling? You're rolling the same thing. It is a daring security. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> and I gotta check that zero because that might be a complication. It's not your good. I believe. Here comes the complication. That when Jenkins rolls the stats, he will yes. give you a new success. This crew's Some confidence out. in me is wonderful. Somehow <laughs> Jenkins is gonna roll two complications. No, nah, no, nah, he actually got a success. So you get a momentum. And yeah, Stetko and Jenkins working together. You have now five reprogrammed probes ready to go. Okay. And GM, how much distance can these 22nd century probes cover? Uh, I would say based on where I think you're going with this, it's enough that you could seed them throughout the system from Vadis Prime to Vadis 8 and set up your daisy chain. Great. Jenkins? Good work. Thank you, but it was your idea. Very nice. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. I know. Well, technically. <laughs> Just take the praise, Jenkins. Jesus. I accept the praise. <laughs> so Second now I have a, a very important question. Oh, okay. 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 Never mind. Um, who's in command here? I mean, Stetko, you're lieutenant commander, but technically, Dottig, you're the commander, so... No, hard pass. It was. Yes. Uh, you were like a, second in command on the ship, weren't you? So, like, I don't think that was the case, but as a meta, um, I meant to put Stetko, Kisrick yeah. meant to put Stetko in charge. Okay, That's I wasn't I sure. Right. I wasn't sure. Yeah. So, yeah, Stetko, you're in charge. Everybody's sort of looking at you like, do we launch now? Do we launch now? Um, first, she's going to check in with Kiswick. Stetko to captain. Kiswick here. The probes are good to go, sir. We awesome. configured them correctly for the mission, and we're about to launch. All right. We will stand by. Call the ball. Lieutenant Terrell, uh, what's the maximum warp of this vessel? How fast do you need to go? If you could teleport me, that would be nice. Oh, we can get really close, <laughs> and uh, you know I can, I can act. You know, well, we can activate. Well, all right, we'll just get there. <laughs> and uh, he he smacks the uh, smacks the dice, uh, leans over to John and said, John and says, <laughs> she said probes, and he he hits the work. <laughs> so oh my uh, we. God. We sort of zoom out uh, and we see sort of the wrecked hull of the how the old centaur class and uh, one of the exterior doors open and coming out of it is the brand new aardvark, aardvark class shuttle. That's its name now. It's stuck in my head. I'm sorry. Um, the aardvark sort of comes out and it's it's a very oversized shuttle, all things considered. Um, it's almost twice the size of a runabout, but not quite enough to be the size of a Curie class, but it's pretty damn close to a Curie at this point. Um, but as it comes out of the how, uh, Terrell, you angle it towards a Vatis Prime and you hit the big shiny red button to get going. And I need you to roll me a control and a con at a difficulty of two. As the ship just goes... <laughs> Actually, yeah, let's get the uh, ship assisting you. Uh, there should be a sheet for the, well, I have it as Type 20 shuttle. I'll fix it later. Uh, if someone could get the ship's engines in con, please. And you're, you're also going to get a threat. So, hey. Just say now. Because how else am I supposed to use my untapped potential? Does anybody volunteer to do the shuttle? Because I've already got, uh, yeah. uh, already got it. Oh, okay. and we get three total momentum. Yep, uh, I think that means you're up to four overall by my count. So Good yeah, uh, Terrell, you punch the QSD button and the shuttle launches forward into null space. And when you emerge, uh, actually only like 10, 20 minutes later, if that, uh, when you guys emerge... Uh, in orbit of Vadis Prime, you see a very interesting thing unfolding before you. Uh, some time has passed since we last checked in with the groundskeepers, but if you'll permit me a little bit of flavoring. Terrell, you're now like anchored to the front side of the the, uh, the troust, and you have like a proton cannon that you're literally just firing haphazardly at the other Undine bioships. 
while Rez is like hanging out of a, a gap in the hall, just shouting at you. These are things that happens on ground keepers. Mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. that is what the, uh, the regular crew sees as they come into system. There are two hostile Undine here and uh, the Troust is, uh, is having some fun. Are we, we ask these people for help. This is vastly worse than what we actually thought would be here. Oh, that's, that's lovely. Here to engage. <laughs> With what? Uh, we, we got the one little laser that security over there uh, insist upon. I mean, you aren't too glad that I did. For all the good it will do, why don't we just roll the window down and use hand phasers? I'm okay with this. <laughs> look, look, as the person who designed the weapon systems on this ship, I think that this is a spectacularly poor idea that will only get us all killed. I agree. All right, wh- all right just just fire, and uh, you know we'll deal with it. And uh, I'm actually going to use uh, push the limits. <laughs> Okay. Which is uh, the um, basically going to be doing evasive action. Okay. Uh, uh, he's going to try to he's going to try to pull aggro. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know. Is Steco on board with this plan? She wants to at least talk to the. I mean, are they being actively chased? Oh yeah, like they are like having a dog fight right now. All right. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. What so, else are we going to uh, do? I, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> we All right. Try so to complete our mission, but there is that. Just a suggestion. Mm. So, John, to make Might sure I heard you correctly, you're doing what again? Um, evasive actions. And okay. He's, basically, he's going to try to pull aggro. Mm-hmm. And if he succeeds at an evasive action, uh, I can spend two momentum. And mm-hmm. then we don't suffer any increased difficulty uh, for attacking as well. All right. Well, the good news is, is if you pull it off, the total difficulty to hit you will be a four. So it makes you really, really hard to hit. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, this is going to be a daring con for Terrell. Oh, yeah. The shuttle will assist you with a structure con. This is a difficulty of one, but I'm going to spend some threat and make a difficulty of two. All right. Uh, would you consider this position, position maneuvering? Well, yeah, I'd give it to you. All right. And uh, I'm going to uh, spend uh, one momentum. Okay. All right. And the ship, who's rolling for the ship? I'll get that. That's engines and what? Engines, uh, structure and con, actually, not engines and con. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. All right, that's already four successes. Very nice. All right, so uh, four successes means you get two momentum back, and you're just going to spend that right away for We're going to spend uh... it so that we get the attack without penalty. All right, so sort of from a meta perspective, we see the Aardvark swoop in and fire a few, like, warning shots across the Undine ship's bows, and as it banks off to the right... Uh, one of the Undine ships peels off and begins following and shooting at the Aardvark, which means that uh, we now can have a moment for the rest of the trips to go. All right. Uh, Tapris is like, oh, God. Uh, hey, at least somebody's come to help us. Uh, Tapris, right. is that shuttle shooting at the other Undine? Can, trust, tell him to stop. No. Why? Because... Those Undine are going to eat that little shuttle alive. Oh, not if we help. And uh, he's just going to, he's going to use Deadeye Marksman and just Mm -hmm. blast the hell out of uh, the Undine ship that is, uh, actually, he's going to try to get the back end of the ship that's turned after the shuttle. Okay. Uh, So that is going to be a control security on your part. The trials will assist you with weapon security. Going to spend some threat here to make it thematic. Difficulty of three. All right, and um, so that's difficulty two with Deadeye Marksman. Mm-hmm. And I got you one uh, success with the Trous. Awesome. That's that's new. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and I will spend uh, one momentum 
for th this. I get the actually no. I'm going to spend. I'm going to spend determination. Okay. Uh, glory hound. Yeah. Yeah. And that that should do it. That is four successes, which is more than enough, which means you actually get a point of momentum, two points of momentum. Uh, yeah, so Troust, uh, I'm going to just give you an option here because you have powerful enough weapons. Do you want to blow it up or do you want to cripple it? Uh, he's cripple going it. to cripple, cripple the ship. Okay. They're, so just you, mis they're just misguided. I got you. Hmm. So you fire out from the Troust and it impacts the engine block of the bio ship that's chasing the shuttle. And uh, for those of you in the shuttle, you sort of, you can't like look back out of like a rear view mirror or anything, but on sensors, you see that one of the Undine bio ships has been disabled. We're not saving them for the uh, Undine. We're saving them so we can use the bio ship pieces to, to implant into the planet for terraforming purposes. Oh, that's mm. probably good. Yeah. And yeah. to repair our ship. <laughs> yeah. Not, no, Trails to repair herself. We're not putting uh, foreign... Yeah. Bioship parts inside our ship. Come on. Well, okay. Well, you're the engineer. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, I am. Speaking of uh, other Undine bioships, uh, I'm going to spend some threat to give them an additional die. They've rolled a complication. Interesting. So here's what's going to happen: is the Undine bioship is going to start imploding as it channels far too much energy into its firing fat pattern. And as the fluidic, fluidic array fires and the bioship explodes behind it, Troust, you're hit with a tremendous shock. Specifically, you're going to suffer a lot of breaches here. Uh, but your shields are down. Uh, in fact, let me actually roll your systems here because that could change things. All right, your sensors are injured. Your structure's injured, which we'll handle in a moment. Okay, to structure. Oh my god. Oh no. my god. How do I do that? How? Why do why does this happen to the groundskeepers? Why? It just does. Okay. So, those of you on the shuttle as you maybe bring the shuttle back around to start approaching the troust, you see two life forms just sort of floating out of the <laughs> hole in the troust as an unconscious Tavris and an unconscious Rez are just sort of floating in space. Well, that can't be good for them. Oh, they're, they're undine. They're fine. Uh, they're, I can't believe you did space. this to us. Uh, but there's still a ship up? Yeah, the, the ship is still up. No, the uh, there is still one... Uh, oh, no, no, no. Up. The uh, the other bio ship is... Uh, it's okay. Gunzo. Okay. So, yeah, we're going we're gonna to try to... Uh, Go pick them up. Okay. So my question is, how are you picking them up? Are you going to transport them aboard? Are you going to track them into the back and then airlock cycle them? What's the play here, Dante? I think this is your call. Well, is there a way that we can create a pocket of their atmosphere or are they are they in humanoid form or they I are in humanoid it? form yes hmm. um, but well. what I would say is based on what you're seeing on your medical scanners mm -hmm. you need to perform first aid on them immediately otherwise there is a chance then emergency transport now very good I'll beam them into the cargo bay all right so Jana we're actually gonna roll for it this time because they are Undine which makes things difficult so let's break it down. So, uh, the first thing is with transporters, it starts at a difficulty of one. Well, the target is not a the target is not on a transporter pad, which means it becomes a difficulty of two. Their undine becomes a difficulty of three, and uh, I'm gonna make it more thematic by spending the last of my threat to make it a difficulty of four. For you, Jana, this is going to be a control engineering. The shuttle will assist you with a sensors engineering. All right. Uh, I would like to spend three momentum to get two extra dice. Okay. And I would assume that my materialization systems focus would apply? Most definitely. Okay. Oh, yeah. Very nice. That's already four successes. Very nice. 
Uh, someone have the shuttle? All right, I guess not, no one has the shuttle. Not it. All right, I've got it. What What are we rolling for the shuttle? Uh, you were rolling a sensors engineering for the shuttle. Sensors engineering. All right, so no help there, but hey, you got the four successes you needed. So yeah, materializing uh, in the back of the, uh, not the runabout, but the aardvark is going to be uh, both res and, ta oh, no, nope, that's the wrong map. <laughs> Is uh so Jenkins, you're in the back. Uh Dotig's there with you, and appearing are your uh new friends from the uh, groundskeeper fashion. They're both unconscious right now. All right, well, uh guess that's my cue to go ahead and perform first aid on them. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna offer you an interesting uh, scenario here. Mm -hmm. Do you want a high difficulty or do you want an extended task? In honor of our groundskeeper friends, I want a high difficulty. God. Okay. I like I like that we're risking death in a cameo appearance. This is the best. <laughs> I'm Next sure time on groundskeepers, Rez died, so there's a new undine in town. Oh lord! I if it happened, I'd figure out a way to make it. Work. But no, this is this is interesting. Uh yeah. So Dotic, this is going to be a control and or a I'll give you control or daring, uh, plus medicine, of course. Uh, if you have surgery, uh, trauma, yep. yeah, you, surgery. you have a focus. You've got one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say the difficulty here is going to be a four okay. um, because they're undine. Um, yeah, I actually have um, a, uh, a talent. Uh, quick study. So um, when attempting unfamiliar medical procedures uh, or medical procedures on species I'm unfamiliar with, I ignore difficulty increases stemming from that unfamiliarity. Then it's only a difficulty of three. Okay. And uh, you know what? I'll go ahead and tap uh, my determination. Of, uh, I'll tap a value first, do no harm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll go ahead and roll. We'll see what happens. All right. Yeah, let's see what happens. I would laugh so hard right now if you rolled straight complications. Right? I might literally die. I might would, literally die. That would be the way that it goes. Okay. All right. All right. You got five successes, which means not only do you get two momentum, Rez and Tabris, you come to, and you're in the interior of a very spacious, very luxurious looking shuttle. Oh. Tabris, what did you do to the troust? What? <laughs> Oh, never mind that. Uh, and Tabris is almost instantly like chipper, uh, and he like elbows rest. Look, Ow. fuzzy dice. <laughs> We're and not I putting those you on our bridge. You know, I really hope you're better at your job than you look. Welcome oh. to the Ardvark. Actually, you you did really you did really good. Uh, he's looking, you know. Uh, do you know much about Undine biology? No, I've never examined one of you before. Oh, well, you you did really good. Uh, you know, A plus all the way. That figures. I mean, A double plus, really. A, a double plus. Uh, who's uh, in, well, who's in command here? I am. Um, uh, would you mind this... hailing the troust and seeing how she's doing? Yeah, because we figured out a way to restore the, uh, the ozone, but we need our ship. <laughs> And I'm just imagining everybody like looks out of the front window and the trous is like doing one of those ballerina dances like end over end as it just sort of floats past. You really jackknifed that thing. Uh, hey, I'm not the uh, pilot. That's like keep being reminded. You know, a proper engineering would have kept it together. Uh, you'll notice she is together. Well, one well, third of her is together. Tabris points to a, point, uh, a piece floating behind it. Uh, that's not our ship. That's a different that's a different ship. Oh yeah. Okay. Um Lieutenant Terrell, would you mind hailing the uh, ship? Yes, sir. And he uh uh tries to hail the ship. You get a reply, but it's text only, and all it says is tell Tabris and Rez I hate them. <laughs> that's all it says. All right, uh, we got a reply. Uh, text only. 
Um, uh, I assume you two guys are uh, Tabris and Rez? Oh, yep. Yeah, your ship hates you. Oh, she is mad. I'm not going to be able to get the environmental controls in my room right for a month. Jenkins, would you please secure our guests elsewhere on the shuttle as we complete our mission? Yes. Uh, Gentlemen, if you'll follow me, I will uh, introduce you to our replicator. Well, if you can get us back on our ship. Uh, actually, the, I think we, we may be able to help you with that. With the replicator? No, no with, has, with your like, mission. 15, I, I assume... Missions. I assume that you're trying to restore ozone to the planet? Yes, and you have five seconds to describe your plan, or we're moving well, you, forward. You'll notice that quantum singularity over there. Take a little bit of fluid from there. We have a chemical process that will convert it to ozone. Should fix you up right lickety split. Yeah, without destroying the uh, squids. What squids? Oh, on the other planet with water that's nearby. Jana? Uh, yes, Commander? At first glance, what do you think? Uh, well, in order to transport biomatter from fluidic space, we need to remodulate uh, the angular confinement beams of the transporters, but it would certainly make the process more efficient than actually going over to that other planet and routing it through a series of relays. Agreed. It's also a time <laughs> saver. So, sorry, I, I have an idea, um, but you guys keep going. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> um. Make it so, team. She'll say, and then she'll step aside to whichever one laughed. That was Rez. Yeah, that was That's me. So funny. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, I wasn't laughing. That was uh, that was my idea sound. Um, uh, listen. Uh, oh did, did you say you have transport relays? Uh, yes, we have several converted probes that could service relays for transporter signals. You could speed this process right up if you just de uh, deploy them around the quantum singularity and have each one uh, relay through the... Here, I'll, I'll just write down the... Uh, does, anybody, does anybody have a pad? I'll, I'll give you the formula, because uh, you should be able to route them through based on this formula, and that'll convert to ozone. And I will have a hand of a pad. I, and then, you're, the, you're the engineer of your vessel, I take it. Absolutely, yep. Ah. I, I could Did you actually... two just become BFFs? Well, it depends. Can you actually describe the process by which the the, the bioneural circuitry of your vessel regenerates? Because oh. that, that's that's always been fascinating to me. Oh yeah, okay. absolutely. <laughs> Stecco's gonna pat Terrell <laughs> on the shoulder, be like, "Hope you're not jealous." You know, maybe we can do this after we save the billions of lives that are in jeopardy. Yeah. See, I actually agree with Porky. <laughs> Don't worry, I will get him for you, Commander. And Jenkins will tackle him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good job, Jenkins. Johnny, you have the formula, don't you? Uh, uh, well, yes. I, I can run through some simulations with this and then see if the... Uh, what was your name again? Rez. Rez. I'll, I'll see if uh, Rez's plan will work. Uh, it's it's really rather an ingenious modification. Oh, if you need any help, let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm a kind of a whiz with transporters. Well, you know what? So am I. It's strange, you know, co coincidences and the, the connections that people can forge between all these different species. It's like what the right? virus is based on. And that's what oh. the groundskeepers are trying to emulate. That, that's, that's really sweet of you. Well, I mean, uh, Terrell kind of rolls his eyes. Um, I just love that also like Dottig is like getting more and more of a scowl as this goes on and I'm loving it. <laughs> but it, you're right. Billions of lives hanging the balance. Uh -huh. not... Yeah. <clears throat> let's let's go make those modifications. Mm -hmm. All right. As is tradition, high difficulty or extended? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Can we hear what the high difficulty is and what the extended task would be? <laughs> extended diff. Oh, uh, we'll say the single task is a six. Extended task would be a four, but you would have only four intervals to do it. Got that nice new miracle worker talent. Let's put that to use. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then let me type out what you're going against. So uh, your work here is actually only going to be out of a 12. Your magnitude is going to be a 3. Your difficulty is going to start at a 4. And I'm going to say there's one resistance on this. But yeah, uh, this is going to be a control and an engineering on your part. Only one other source can assist you, so... 
If you're choosing res, it'll be res, or if you want the shuttle to do it, just make sure you only have the one source of assist. And uh, what I'd like to do is challenge a value in order to get okay. a point of determination. I'd like to challenge will do anything to prove himself because he mm -hmm. feels that he has actually done so through the creation of the shuttlecraft in such a miraculous fashion. Okay, yeah. And you'll replace that at the end of the session. That's right. Um, and then what will I... And I guess I'll tap this time everybody lives. I'll make sure of it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was control engineering? It was control engineering. And you and got res, res helping. I'll buy yeah, res, you're doing the same thing. Okay. I'll buy an extra die as well. Okay. It would be three for two? Uh, it would be five for two. Okay. All right, so that is a total of uh, five successes. Very nice. Yeah. A total of seven successes. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to be nice here. You may use Rez's engineering on this, and you may roll me seven challenge dice, Jana. You also got... Uh, a bit of momentum back mm -hmm. to yeah, spend on rerolls. <laughs> so that is currently a uh, five, uh, which is enough for a breakthrough. But would you like to reroll those zeros? Uh, yes. So I'll spend one of the momentum that we just got on rerolling the uh, three zeros. Okay. Oh. No. I'll spend another one of those momentum that we just got on rerolling those three zeros. Okay. I, I think you can only do it twice. Or you can oh, only do it once. What? Riz, this is your fault. I'm blaming you for this. How? How, how can this be my fault? How? You've cursed us. I, Undine. I, I mean, maybe I, maybe you guys should make your uh, transporter systems a little more robust. I didn't mean to break the pattern buffer by just leaning on it. It was an accident. You're an Undine. You can kill, like... A, a, a Borg drone with your bare hands. You, you have to be careful what you're touching, man. I mean, not in I this form. Borg Actually, maybe in this form. Borg drone with my bare hands. <laughs> Just dang in the backs, like actually. Well, the good news is you actually do make significant progress on this, and it, yeah, sure enough, with resin and. Uh, Jana working together, you guys are using the unique abilities of not only the groundskeeper sort of theory, but the actual uh, engineering of the Aardvark shuttle. And I would say at this point, you've restored maybe about a quarter or maybe even a half of the ozone required. So yeah, um, you can roll again, or we could just narratively end it because really all you're doing at this point is rolling to see if you don't roll a complication. Make him do it again. You know Don't what? We're going to make you do it again. You, you know what? Tradition. You got to roll for it. Oh, so same rolls as before. Oh, no. <laughs> Listen, I can only maintain control of this for so long. <laughs> so I will buy two extra dice with uh, one momentum or two momentum and one threat. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Riz! Off to a good start. <laughs> Okay. I believe that caps you on momentum as uh, you sort of do one of those flourishes across the panel uh, there, Jana, and Rez does a flourish across his at the same time, and we sort of go back to see that external shot of uh, Vatus Prime, and I wish I had an animation for this, but if you'll imagine, uh, that sort of reddish-brown planet um, begins to slowly turn a shade of blue and green, and the clouds go from that rusty orange to uh, hydro-filled uh, clouds of white. And you have essentially completed your task. And Stetko, you're getting a hail from the planet. This is Shuttle Aardvark. And uh, you don't get a visual, but uh, the Vatus on the other end says, Whoever the hell you are... Thank you. This is um, Lieutenant Commander Stetko with crew from Deep Space October. Stetko, Stetko, we don't know of you, but we do now. So that's great. Yeah, that's that's really great. Uh, do you you're from the Federation, right? Yes. Does, does the Federation do celebration parties? 
I believe we do. Excellent. Then I expect your presence at the following coordinates in an hour. And then they'd like end the communication, but you do get a set of coordinates. Okay. How long is the trip to the how? Uh, if you took QSD, you could be here and back in time. We need to go pick up the captain. Yes, sir. All right. Yep. Make it uh, so. Tavris, do you think we should tell them that we're not part of their ship? You know, um, I, I, I think we're fine. I, I think we should go to the party. But, I mean, don't you guys like the party? I, I do like the party. And well, as uh, Rez as a little we, too much. As we sort of pull the, the frame back and uh, non-copyrighted music by the Venga bus begins playing, uh, that is where we're going to end our little crossover session as you guys <laughs> have successfully saved the people of Vadis Prime. <clears throat> Yay. So yeah, what did you guys think? Was that a good experience? That was great. I'm yes. all for the ELH cinematic universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, there were a lot of good developments in the, in that episode, which I really enjoyed. So I'm glad it worked out. Jenkins is officially requesting a transfer to the little known what he thinks the Federation Starship Troust. <laughs> nice. nice, nice. All right. Well, we can, uh, we can use a third player. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's see. What do I have to do on screen? Oh, so Watney, I don't know if that extra life ever went through because my overlay never picked it up. So... Oh, I did bits. Oh, she oh did you did bits. bits. Yeah. Okay, that, I wasn't sure. I thought maybe I said the wrong word. But yeah, I, I was like, I, I was watching the overlay the entire time. Like, is it gonna pop? Is it gonna pop? Yeah, I got bits in the pocket. So. Gotcha. Well, I do want to say thank you to everyone who did do bits tonight, uh, especially to uh, Lily for doing those uh, five gift subs and the whole hype train mm -hmm. earlier. Really appreciate it. Uh, makes me a little bit touched as a GM that you guys think I'm worthy of that, but uh, <laughs> not going to cry on stream. Uh, let's see. So next time will be the 13th. Is everybody good for the 13th? Yep. Yep. All right. So YouTube. This question. Oh, that's right. Because the Apple is going to release and you're going to... I'm just going to plan for you not being here, John, because I know how your releases go. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so, yeah, YouTube, this is where I'm going to end the recording. Twitch, stick around for just a little bit longer because we have to find someone to raid. So, YouTube, see you later.